Hey guys, Abraxas here, and welcome to... This isn't Universe Sandbox 2, this is Space Engine. Well, it's because I'm going to be going to J1407B. And let's go ahead and check it out. Here is J1407, the star. Which is an orange dwarf, rather small star. And then if we turn our camera here... Many of you guys have already seen this. Ah, yes, there it is. J1407. A very, very, very large ringed gas giant thing. Basically, this is a kind of proto-system of a gas giant, which is really dim at this time of year for this thing. So let's go ahead and hit play and just let it kind of orbit around the star. You'd imagine if it was orbiting that way, a lot of that ring would probably be pulled around the star, but who knows. Wow, why is that so dim? That is not as dim as I recall this thing being. Maybe because I have real planet brightness on. That's probably why. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we have J1407B, which is a very, very, very beautiful looking gas giant with these giant rings. This is basically what we think a proto-system around a gas giant may possibly look like. Possibly this is what Jupiter looked like. We don't really know. But what I'm curious about is the mass of the gas giant and the kind of distance of its rings from its uh, kind of center here. So if I go over to the edge of the rings, which is roughly right here I think is the cutoff point. Which, if I go down here to ambient lighting, I can go ahead and turn this up, and now I can actually see the rings a lot better. So this right here is the very edge of the rings. And there's gas giant. Our distance to the gas giant is 5, or 0 0.58 astronomical units. So what I'm going to be doing in Universe Sandbox 2 today is basically recreating this gas giant. I've been kind of asked to do that in previous videos, suggestions, and all that. But uh, yeah, I thought it'd be kind of fun just to make a gas giant of this mass and add some rings. Kind of just based off the uh, just parameters that are in Space Engine. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, here we go. This is looking a little bit more familiar. Okay, so I think I'm just going to load up a new system and let's use... I highly doubt the uh, star that was used there is actually available in the game. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be actually in the game. So we'll just use some random red dwarf. Let's use something like this. Okay, so the gas giant in question I think was 20 masses of Jupiter if I'm correct. So I didn't actually get the distance of which it's orbiting, but we'll approximate it. Maybe drop it in at around, let's go with two astronomical units. Which is probably way off, but that's not really the point of the experiment anyways. Yeah, that that is way off. Let's let's drop it in at one. The rings themselves are five or zero point five eight, so I mean it's gonna be a pretty pretty large ring almost touching the star it's gonna be one third of the way there let's put it at 1.5 so one third of the way there okay so we have Jupiter here we want to change its mass to Jupiter and set it to a value of 20 and there we go we have a really really large gas giant let's go ahead and turn on flashlight so we can actually see this lovely gas giant as you can see it does still have Jupiter's lovely red storm okay so we want to tilt the uh, rotation of this planet so let's go ahead and mess with the inclination and just kind of increase that a little bit that should change the orbit around the parenting star ooh that is a pretty high amount of inclination let's go a little bit lower than that Okay, perfect. Okay, so we'll want to change its rotational axis. Let's see if we can actually change that value. So 
So does it actually have a tilt now? I think it does. No, it does not seem to actually have been changed at all. Yep, there we go. Now it's kind of orbiting a little bit more like... We're not orbiting, but rotating a little bit more like Uranus. To add some leveling rings to it. So let's see, let's get the view thing out of here. Let's go to Saturn and edit Saturn's rings. So the inner radius, I assume, is perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and change the outer radius. Which... Interesting that it has a value of... Earth. Ah, uh, there we go. Let's use astronomical unit. Okay, so that's diameter of Earth. Okay, so we want 0 0.58. And... The number of particles can be 15,000. Number of bodies is irrelevant. Let's go ahead and add this ring. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's orbiting a little bit close to the star. Look at that ring, it's absolutely beautiful. Wow. And there is J1407's beautiful ring. Or rings, many, many rings. And they're very, very large. And let's view it from the star. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is orbiting probably a bit too close to the star, but that is absolutely beautiful. Let's go ahead and rename this to J1407. And this beautiful thing will be called J1407B. And there we go. I like how it actually has like that little outer ring too, kind of like J1407. I think using Saturn's rings was actually pretty good for this. And let's go ahead and speed up time and see if this is actually stable. Well, first things first, I actually want to save it. So let's go ahead and speed up time and see if this is actually stable. Of course, there's a lot of particles here. Speeding this up is going to be rather difficult. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful and very, very laggy because I'm using 15,000 particles. It doesn't look like it's falling behind or anything around beyond the planet, so... It actually looks like it's orbiting very stable. And as you can imagine, the star would have like a, uh... This is kind of early in its life, it'd probably have its own like little... Kind of disc. Uh... Is that an asteroid belt? There we go, got like a little asteroid belt for the system. Kind of a little bit too big though, let's remove that. Eh, that's probably not what we want. Let's try just adding Saturn's rings to it. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of cool. So there we go. Kind of the uh, J1407 system. Obviously, we can't see the other planets that are potentially in the system. And there would be a lot of fine moons kind of orbiting inside these lovely rings here. But we have yet to actually discover those. But this is a very cool effect. And I've explained it many, many times in the... Uh, Space Engine Exploration series, that uh, the way we discovered J1407 is we have this star here, and then it would pass beyond the rings, and then through each band you would see like a flicker, and then it would just disappear towards the center, and it would do the exact opposite on the other side. And that's what makes us think that this is either like a brown dwarf with a uh, kind of start of a system going on, and look at that, it's not actually stable. Look at that, it's actually kind of gotten three-dimensional. That's super interesting. 
So it kind of says that the way it was actually orbiting in Space Engine is probably not a very stable method. Because look at that, it's actually warping. Oh, uh, that's, that's super cool. So the way that's actually orbiting around in Space Engine on a kind of tilted axis here would not actually work, I don't think, because the star's gravity is actually bending it and folding it in weird ways. That's very cool. Anyways, there you go, J1407B in Universe Sandbox 2. If you guys liked the video, please leave it a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe, it really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one.